Yeah, this is actually a presentation about a journal article on an article I submitted to SIM, System Information Management, Management and Information Systems. It's a B journal and it is about, it's a special issue about smart cities and smart homes. The research is called Home Sweet Home, How Wellbeing Shapes the Adoption of Artificial Intelligence Powered Smart Homes. Right? It's with my co-author Julian Florek and uh, Subsequently, you can see already here, we're talking about adoption. So the idea is here clearly to uh, uh, understand the factors that impact positively and negatively the adoption of smart homes. So why is this topic relevant? So uh, uh, the introduction about smart city, smart home, uh, they're strongly related. So uh, in Bangkok, there's a completely new quarter, which is uh, on the point to uh, get constructed, called When Bangkok, and this is the smart city, through IoT, through artificial intelligence, through connected technologies. And the topic is highly relevant because all nations today are thinking about making the city smart because these cities face important problems we have today, namely environmental problems, but also energy problems, uh, but also well-being problems. Uh, so let's come a bit little bit closer to, uh, to the concept of smart city. What is a smart city? It's a combination of ideas. It's not very clear today. Right? So there's also an important contribution to do because there's no single uh, definition about what is a smart city. Uh, but it's uh, uh, based on IoT. Uh, these are cities which are based on IoT, communication technologies that improve the functioning of the city. And as cities grow, so like Bangkok or uh, Singapore, a lot of new, new problems, mainly uh, these are old problems, traffic congestions, but above all, energy management, waste and pollution management, health management, management of well-being, but also improved living conditions and safety. And working on the adaptation of the city to the current and future need is a priority for all stakeholders, huh? so namely politicians, managers, but also inhabitants, huh? above all inhabitants, and it's a big challenge to work on uh, the, the, the adaptation of these cities. And as I just stated, in Bangkok, the full street was destroyed to create a new smart city called Wan Bangkok with smart buildings, smart flats, as well as roads and means of. The managerial context is also very important for, and uh, we're switching from smart cities to smart homes. Huh? So the glo global smart homes market is expected to increase dramatically uh, and to double in the next four years. This is not only the case in U the US, but uh, also in Europe. As you can see, the expenditures double from 2018 to 2021. And uh, if you look, and that's also a positive signal, global companies like Google and Samsung have already entered this market by providing innovative services, products, and to take advantage of these so you can see for all the different uh, uh, devices, uh, energy management, security, comfort, and lightning, you can see an increasing uh, tendency. Uh, our research problem is the following one. So even if AI and smart home technologies are increasingly present in households, many consumers are still reluctant to use these technologies because you, as, if you look at the penetration rate, it's, it's very low because they don't want to delegate decision-making authority to AI and machines. Their concerns include loss of control, loss of freedom, uh, but also privacy issues, hacking, distrust, fear that the technology could harm the health. And if you look at the literature, academic research about smart home acceptance is scarce. And that is why understand how and why users accept or reject AI-based smart homes is an important issue. And it is important to understand the consumer perceptions of these technologies. That is why you can see our contributions. So on the theoretical level, um, we contribute to the business science literature because most research about smart homes comes from engineering and consumer si computer science jobs. So there's something like 1,500 articles and only 80 of them are published in management science journals. Uh, therefore, empirical studies about adoption of smart homes are scanned. Our research question is uh, which cognitive and affective factors influence the adoption of smart homes. And we contribute by enhancing the UTUT. Uh, and we only select effort expectancy, performance expectancy, and behavior intention to use. And we integrate other consumer behavior theories because we are working on the end user market. 
uh, namely regular regulatory focus theory, uses and gratification theory, technology readiness theory, and we include few investigated investigated cognitive and affective variables coming from AI acceptance models, namely technology trust, privacy concern, technology security, and well-being. To come to well-being, it's clearly under-investigated in marketing, but also in IS research. And finally, our last contribution is that we enhance external validity by a country comparison by doing cross-cultural technology acceptance with studies which are scanned and which are uh, considered as a key issue in IS and marketing research. And from the managerial point of view, we uh, show factors that influence well-being to be develop, develop better smart homes. We show how to understand consumer expectations to improve smart homes and devices, and we improve targeting strategies. So let's do a short literature review. First of all, let's review the concept smart city to come then to smart home, which will enable us to see then our conceptual model. Right? So what is a smart city? A smart city monitors and integrates critical infrastructures, that is roads, bridges, tunnels, transport systems, airports, water, energy, smart flats, to optimize the resources and to prevent uh, maintenance activities and to monitor security and to create well-being to the city. It works on a technical infrastructure based on IoT, uh, which is connected to a physical infrastructure, uh, information, communication technology infrastructure, social infrastructure, business infrastructure, in order to leverage well in qualitative intelligence, but also well-being and participation, political inclusion and participation, and in order to improve environmental quality. Research is done in the different domains, and so e-commerce, so economy, mobility, governments, so democratic processes, people, uh, that is uh, very important now at the time of for COVID, uh, home working, but also education, living, smart homes, and this is what our research is about, about smart homes, and environment. And so we position clearly ourselves in the context of smart living or smart homes. Which brings me to the definition of a smart home. So a smart home is an intelligent resonance equipped with communications networks, linking sensors, AI, IoT, uh, and domestic household devices that can be remotely monitored, accessed, or controlled, and which provide personalized services that respond to the needs of the inhabitants to promote comfort, but well-being, security, and entertainment. And as you can see, always the con concept well-being is very important. It collects real-time data, big data, that uh, is analyzed by AI in order to offer personalized solutions for the residents. For example, uh, self-learning thermostates, security systems, smart water, and so on. And the AI service operates by self-understanding residents' behaviors in order to optimize decision-making, to increase well-being, and to achieve remote control. We have different types of smart homes. So the assistance smart homes, which uh, we are working on, which provide healthcare, quality of life, health, and well-being. We have the surveillance smart homes, which forecast disasters or security interventions. For example, if you take the example of Thailand, uh, uh, residences which are in earthquake areas or Indonesia, it's even more dramatic. Uh, these smart homes would be able to forecast earthquakes or tsunamis uh, in order to protect in, in, uh, the inhabitants and uh, to pr pr create security. And you have the environmental smart homes which aim at improving energy efficiency. And okay. yeah, we did a review about smart homes literature used on uh, business source ultimate um, keywords, smart home, smart device, intelligent home, digital home, AI-based home, smart home devices, and found 270 peer-reviewed journal articles. The primary domains, you can see 128 articles came from the engineering and computer science, or even more. Huh? Uh, so uh, 128 about electronic software systems, 62 articles IoT, but they were published uh, in engineering and computer science journals focusing on technologies in the smart homes. Only 80 articles were published in business journals focusing on concept mainly conceptual research without any empirical investigation. 
uh, and with a focus on technical challenge, IoT, smart technologies, but they do not focus on, uh, they only focus on, sing on single devices, uh, for example, a smart grid or smart variables, and they do not focus on a full smart home offering uh, different devices, uh, because a full smart home will offer energy optimization, uh, health monitoring, will offer entertainment, and so they only focus on a single device, and this uh, gives not an adequate picture of the full range of smart home services. Actually, there's another gap in the research about adoption and usage of smart homes from the end user's perspective, because there are only 10 studies from which only three are averagely ranked in hearts and social science genre ranks. Right? So uh, actually there are three articles here, you can see them, which are ranked uh, averagely uh, in, in the FNEJ, which is the French uh, ranking. Three is like, C, like a C journal in the EGIS, uh, one is also like a C or even a D journal. And so you can see very few has been published about smart home adoption. And uh, most of them are not even uh, ranked in journals. And most of these studies have also methodological flaws because they no, don't, don't use scenarios or only descriptive verbal scenarios and no videos or virtual reality to simulate uh, the smart home environment and its benefits to frame for uh, still for most users unfamiliar technology right? because a smart home today is abstract and most of us we are not really confirmed and, and, and feminine with that. This makes it hard to understand the functions and that is why our uh, methodological contribution is also we use the video to prime uh, the respondents to a smart home. Here are the studies that are summarized here. This is a table of uh, uh, the studies, and you, again, you can see that they use mainly TEM, UTAUT. They come from US, China, Korea. Uh, so uh, I don't go deeper into this table, but this is actually what we found. Actually, that uh, there are few studies, and these studies are not very good in very, very good ranked journals. And uh, we contribute to the smart home acceptance research by answering to the question what influences smart home adoption? to turn from a standalone IoT device uh, study to an integrated full smart home systems study that takes into account different types and services of smart homes. We contribute to the theory of acceptance from clear, clearly UTAUT of smart homes by integrating cognitive uh, and affective variables, namely uh, 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 utilitarian, financial, perceived risks, health, uh, psychological, emotional, and affective factors that create or destroy value by using quantitative methodologies uh, to investigate consumer attitudes, preferences, and intention to use. And we do replications in developed and developing countries, namely uh, yeah, in France and Germany compared to China. So we do a cross-cultural uh, study where we compare different cultural and uh, economic uh, contexts. So let's come to our conceptual framework. So we use different theories. So, so uh, we use UTAUT, to which I come in some instance, but we use another theory, which is called regulatory focus theory that argues that there are two types of goals when we take decisions to purchase new products or new technologies. There are the utilitarian uh, prevention oriented goals in which we find ease of use, performance, and uh, security and protection. And we, uh, there are the effective promotion oriented goals based on hedonism, happiness, and well being. And so we choose only one part of the UTAUT, right? one cognitive part, namely effort and performance expectancy and behavioral intention to use that follow regulatory focus theory utilitarian prevention oriented goals. We do not in take into account. UTA to UTAUT factors like hedonism as it is close to well being, facilitating conditions, social recognition, because they have been sufficiently investigated in the technology acceptance literature and smart home literature. Uh, see the meta analysis of Blut and colleagues of 2021. And instead, we end in UTAUT with new, few investigated variables coming from AI and service robot acceptance theory namely technology trust and security, privacy concerns, uh, which correspond to utilitarian factors of the regularity focus theory. And we introduce promotion-oriented motivation variables such as well-being 
which are very important assets in marketing and IS research, which brings me to our model. So we have here the basic reduced UTAUT. You see that effort expectancy, uh, according to literature, impacts performance expectancy. So the perception that the use of a smartphone is simple and effortless should positively impact performance expectancy. That is the perception that the use of a smartphone enhances user performance. And this is our hypothesis 1A. And subsequently, uh, this should positively impact behavioral intention to use. Uh, and this is clearly confirmed by Ben Katesh uh, and colleagues and a lot of other studies about the UTAUT. These links are conceptually confirmed. On the effective path, we introduce subjective uh, well being, which is the personal state of mind linked to different factors, which are physical, psychological, medical, social, spiritual, economical self-realization, harmony, happiness. As nice. so you can see, well-being is a very complicated, large concept. Uh, depends on individuals. Uh, if we connect this to a smart home, we can think that clearly smart home should increase physical well-being, but also psychological well-being, medical uh, health. Uh, if you monitor the chronic diseases, for example, yeah, economical well-being, because it might reduce the expenditures for, for energy, Overconsumption, uh, pleasure, and self realization because you should have uh, hedonistic devices such as, for example, home cinemas or ho home videos, home music. These are mainly dimensions which should be linked to well being um, uh, related to a smart. And you can see this is an effective factor according to the regular the regulatory focus theory. And according to literature, uh, Anderson and colleagues found that well being impacts positively intentional usage of technologies. So we suppose that this should impact positively smart home use. We can see here uh, 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 that performance expectancy should impact well-being because the more we enhance our performance, uh, the more we win time, this should give us free time to use us to our leisure activities, which in turn should increase subjective user well-being. Then we consider that trust is again a, a cognitive factor, according to the regulatory focus theory, uh, which should Im, uh, impact subjective well being. Uh, the more we trust, the more we reduce uncertainty and um, perceived risk. And this should increase psychological well being, which in turn, then, in a, uh, as we have already hypothesized, should increase bare intention of usage of. And Trust itself should also, due to reduction of perceived risk, should uh, impact positively variable intention of usage. And privacy concerns, which are the concerns about the flow and control collection of storage and sharing of personal data, uh, should negatively impact trust to technology. This is confirmed by literature, Hong and Tong. And on the other hand, technology security, which is the capacity of the technology to be reliable, to keep the users physically and mentally safe in a given situation, and how it reduces human errors, should impact positively trust. And so the more we reduce, increase te technology security, the lower the perceived risk, and the higher should be the perceived technology security of the smart home. Then we consider culture. As we said, we do the study in China, France, and Germany. There are different cultures. What is culture? It's a belief system that shapes individual schemas about the world around them that plays a subtle, powerful role influencing our social behavior. So clearly, the behavior between a Chinese customer and a German customer should be different. We used actually the conceptual model of Hofstede. And uh, you can see here, for example, uh, yeah, in Western nations, France and Germany, we have much more individualistic societies than in Asia and mainly here in China. You see, but also that the power distance between people, the hierarchy is more important in China or Eastern civilizations than in Western civilizations. You can see here, uh, we took two dimensions which appear relevant for technology acceptance, namely masculinity and femininity and uncertainty avoidance. Uh, so we can see that in Western countries like France and, and Germany, people are more reluctant to take risks, which should actually negatively impact technology adoption. And you can see here, for example, in Western civilizations, masculinity is lower, so there are more feminine societies, which 
take more care about well-being. Huh? So we also consider that probably the concept well-being plays a major role in Western civilization, which are more feminine. Various utilitarian factors should play a more important role in China, which are more masculine oriented. This is what we will see in our moderating hypothesis. So we can see that actually in societies with high uncertainty avoidance like Germany and France, the Im negative impact of privacy concerns should even be enhanced. In France and Germany, the impact of privacy concerns should be higher on technology trust, more negative impact than in countries with low uncertainty avoidance, which is China. And we can see here that uh, for uh, the technology trust should have an even stronger positive impact on well-being in feminine societies with high uncertainty avoidance because this decreases risks. Uh, on the other hand, in uh, countries with low uncertainty avoidance, the impact positive impact of trust on well-being should be uh, decreased. We introduce another interesting concept to measure cultural dimensions, which are the technology and network readiness index, which shows only how developed a society is. And it consists of yeah, innovativeness of a society, of a country, attitudes to technology. And uh, yeah, you can see here, for example, network readiness index assesses also the development of a country in terms of technologies, people, how they use technologies, how they leverage their skills governments, uh, safety, well-being, quality of life. And you can see that developed countries like Germany and France are better ranked on both. Uh, they're 8 and 21, respectively, compared to China, which is 73 per position. And on the, you can see for the network readiness index, Germany is on the 9th, France on the 18th, and China only on the 41 place. Uh, so we consider also there should be a moderation, which you can see in the following slide. So we see that actually performance expectancy, the imp positive impact should be positively moderated. So in developed countries like Germany or France with high technology readiness and network readiness, the impact of PE on uh, behavior intention of usage should be even stronger compared to countries like China where uh, these technology re readiness is lower. And we find the same link for effort expectancy. This link is actually lower for countries like Germany and France, which have high TRI. Why? Because in the beginning of a technology stadium, which means that when a country has low technology readiness, expectancy is, according to literature, more important than performance expectancy. And this our study is confirmed by Venkatesh and colleagues. In other words, countries with low levels of technology development, pay more attention to ease of use because uh, yeah, they're not familiar with the technology. And that is why the effort expectancy should play an increasing role in these developing countries. And that is why uh, our hypothesis is that the lower the technology readiness, the higher should be also the impact of uh, effort expectancy on performance expectancy. And finally, we find here that actually in feminine societies and also societies with have, having high technology readiness, the impact of well-being should be strengthened. Various in countries with low technology readiness and uh, high masculinity, uh, the impact of well-being should be lower on behavior and tension of usage. So these are our moderating hypotheses. And here's our full conceptual framework. Yeah? So you can see the summary of our hypothesis. So we see the Cognitive path, effort, expectancy, performance, expectancy on behavior and intention of use, which is the UTAUT framework. And we have here our other framework with trust, privacy concerns, and well being, which is new in the model and our main contribution, and the impact on behavior and intention of use. And we use culture as a moderation France versus Germany versus China. And we test also the differences in terms of gender, age, occupation, and IoT usage and experience. This is our sample. So we had a convenience sample, 300 persons, 102 from France, 88 from Germany, and 111 from, from China. We have a quite e equilibrated sample, uh, almost half women and men. Age is not too young, uh, it's 37. And before the survey, respondents looked at a video uh, about smart home and its usages. Uh, we
the choice of existing scales, uh, which were all uh, satisfying in terms of reliability, because the Kronbach alphas are all higher than 0 0.7. And also our uh, conversion and uh, validity is also good. Uh, the indicators are all uh, fitting well. And you can see the scales are here without going too much into detail. Uh, they have all high Kronbach alphas. Uh, and uh, uh, here are the items. And what you can see is that actually we adapted the items to the context. Uh, for example, effort expectancy comes from Venkatesh and colleagues. Uh, so published in MISQ. Uh, I would find it easy to use and set up a smart home and it's connected. I would find it easy to become skillful at using a smart home and its connected services. I would learn quickly to use uh, a smart home. So you see, we clearly adapted the items to the context. And we used Likert scales uh, between one and uh, five. Uh, one means do not agree at all, and five means agree, uh, fully agree. Subjective well being was used by. Um, Dina, which is actually the research about well-being, uh, so we used it's published in an A journal. Trust was uh, measured with Morgan and Hunt, published in the Journal of Marketing, so an A plus journal. Privacy concerns was measured with Hong and Tong, it's MISQ, it's, it's an A plus journal. Uh, perceived uh, technology security here. These are the results. So you can clearly see that uh, most of our hypotheses are, are confirmed. So we can see that actually in line with UTIUT effort expectancy impacts performance expectancy very positively and significantly. Performance expectancy impacts variable intention of usage highly positively and significantly. You can see that subjective well-being in line with our hypothesis impacts positively behavioral intention to use smart homes. You can see that performance expectancy impacts subjective well being highly positively and highly significantly. So, at the 001 level, um, trust positively and highly significantly impact subjective well being and subsequently behavioral intention uh, to use. You can see, in line with our hypothesis, that privacy concerns negatively impact the trust highly significantly. And you can see that technology security also highly significantly and positively impact technology trends. So we confirm all our hypotheses. You can also see our control variables. As you, there very few are significant, but you can see actually IoT ownership. If people already use IoT or smart connected objects, this positively impacts variable intention. So we have a kind of proxy of user experience. You also see workers are negatively correlated to uh, behavior intention of use. Right? This means that the lower the social status, the lower the probability of intention of use, which is also intuitive because these smart homes are probably expensive and workers are probably less familiar and less, less educated to these technologies. So there's a clear link between um, education, social status, and smart home intention of usage. Uh, but we do not find any differences in terms of gender neither age. Right? So uh, in all the countries, age and gender do not play any uh, importance. But we find actually that the impact of well-being on behavioral intention of usage is higher for women than for men, right? which appears also plausible, because women are probably more oriented on harmony and well-being than men. Then we compare our results by country, and we see actually uh, that so privacy concerns are high are negative in all the three countries. Right? So the, the link on of privacy concerns on, of tr on trust is negative, but only significant in Germany and France, and highly significant in Germany and highly negative in Germany. Right? This shows that by decreasing order, Germany, the impact of privacy concerns on trust is most negative in Germany, followed by France, and not significant in China. And we can also see that also the uh, impact on trust on well-being is highly significant and higher in Western civilizations, France and Germany, than in feminine societies, than in masculine societies such as China. And we find that uh, performance expectancy on uh, behavioral intention of use is only significant in France and Germany. And we can see that, yeah, as we expect, the impact of ex effort expectancy on, on perceived performance expectancy is higher in China, uh, in countries which are lower 
technology oriented than countries which are higher technology oriented. Right? So this means clearly that uh, in, in developing countries, if effort expectancy is more important than performance expectancy, whereas in developed countries, performance expectancy is more important than effort expectancy. And you can also see that uh, here again, yeah, in feminine and developed countries, subjective well-being is highly significant and positive in France and Germany, also positive in China, but the impact is much lower than in uh, developed countries. We confirm you with the mediation analysis, the link to, from effort expectancy on variable intention of use goes through performance expectancy. And so this is actually confirmed by UTAUT. You can also see that privacy concerns uh, with trust are very important concepts uh, because there's an indirect link from privacy concerns on intention of use, negative impact, you can also see here again, yeah, that uh, there's a negative impact on uh, via trust, well-being on intention of use. And so we actually confirm the mediations in our model. Uh, the mediations are more important than the direct impact of these respective variables, showing that trust, creating trust, is a very important mean that enables to decrease the negative impact of privacy concerns. Or creating well-being is a very important concept because it enhances trust and it decreases actually privacy concerns. So in terms of the discussions of our results, we, discussion means that this is what you're writing at the end of here. The discussion is that you compare your results with existing results from the literature. We created and examined full conceptual integrated model, UTAUT, which we enhanced with other techno technology acceptance series but also this regulatory focus theory, uses and gratification theory, as well as technology readiness theory to explain the adoption of uh, smart homes in different countries. So first of all, we confirm that the regulatory focus theory perfectly fits for technology acceptance, right? because we show that there are two complementary types of goals or paths when taking decisions to adopt technologies. First, there's a utilitarian path involving uh, performance and effort expectancy. And you have, on the other hand, the effective promotion oriented path based on values such as well being and health. And we show that uh, within the promotion oriented path, beyond performance and effort expectancy, consumers look for well being while using technology and smart home technology. So, this is in line with users and gratification theory that demonstrate that users are searching for positive feelings and well-being when using technologies. And this is particularly relevant when looking at smart homes, right? because smart homes aim at creating well-being and, and health. We show that well-being is even more important than environmental benefits, because most of uh, research shows the importance of environmental benefits. But we show that actually well-being appears to be even more important. Another utilitarian and prevention oriented path runs from perceived technology security to behavior intention of usage via the mediator trust. And so as we have just seen, trust is a very important mediator between security and privacy concerns and behavior intention to use. So subsequently, the promotion oriented path goes from technology trust that influences positively well-being through a decrease of perceived risks. And this has a positive impact on behavioral intention of use of smartphones. And we have another utilitarian and promotion oriented path that runs negatively from privacy concerns to behavioral intention of use of smartphones via technology, trust, and well being. And so when we discuss the results, it's important that, again, it's important to do a literature review. We show that our results go in the same direction than literature. On the other hand, if we find results that are not in line with literature, we have to explain why we find the differences, right? which is in our case not the case, and because actually all our hypotheses were confirmed. That is why we can, yeah, we, our, our results are in line with our hypothesis, and our hypothesis are naturally justified by the existing literature. Right? That is why we are in line with the literature. So, in summary, to increase technology trust, we have to offer data secure smart homes and the control without technology risk. Uh, I prefer safe smart homes to fully automated smart homes because they want higher technology security, which leads to more trust, which impacts positively well-being and subsequently behavioral intention of use. 
To come to our cross-culture analysis, we uh, enhance the validity of our results because we found a lot of common points between the three countries. But we also found some differences uh, in terms of uncertainty avoidance and uh, masculinity and femininity, which appear very interesting for new technology adoption, uh, such as smartphones. So in line with literature, we found that countries with high levels of UA, uh, clearly Germany and France, are less likely to take risks uh, and thus have uh, higher resistance to change and to intolerance to technology. Uh, so uh, as they perceive more risks, uh, they're more reluctant to adopt new technologies. Various on the opposite side, countries with low levels of UA are more likely to take risks and uh, yeah, more likely to adopt technologies. So therefore in Germany and France, high levels of UA increase the negative impact of privacy concerns. So they, people even perceive more important privacy concerns. Various in China, an Asian country based on Confucian culture, having lower levels of UA, perceived privacy risks prove to have no uh, negative impact on trust and well-being. And this is also in line with literature. And this could be also explained by the legal context, because in, jo in Germany and France and Europe, we have the general data protection regulation, which is a legal context, which is lacking in China. Uh, so in China, uh, the users pay less uh, attention to privacy protection because they're less protected due to legal issues. Uh, and beca because of legal deficiency, uh, to protect the privacy or data collection. Uh, that is why people are actually uh, less concerned in China due also to this legal uh, problems. And in France, a feminine society, dimensions like trust and subjective uh, well-being have partners than in China. Uh, this can be seen that actually in line with uh, uh, literature, we found a high level of motivation for achieving trust, well, happiness in developed countries such as Germany and France or feminine countries. On the other hand, uh, in developing countries such as China, which are at early levels of technology and network readiness, they are more prevention and task oriented problem solvers and thus tend to focus more on performance and uh, effort expectancy. So uh, uh, this is uh, confirmed by the literature. And finally, uh, we, um, we found also the moderating role of technology ready, readiness and network readiness. It plays a major role uh, in adopting smart homes, which is in line with Lynch, because technology readiness fosters innovativeness and so openness to innovation and reduces discomfort and insecurity and is thus positively associated to technology acceptance. Uh, so that is why consumers in countries with high technology readiness are more likely to adopt uh, technologies, new smart home technologies than the counterparts in countries with lower technology readiness. We found actually no difference uh, also in line with literature that uh, gender, age are not playing a major role. This is in line with the uh, original UTAUT theory. Uh, they are not significant in our global model, but also in our multi-group model taking into account specific country differences. Uh, so uh, we thus support the rational that there are no differences in regard to demographic factors. So it's not a very important marketing variable or segmentation variable. And to finish with our uh, contribution, so we show uh, on a theoretical level that uh, our study contributes to IS and marketing research because we embed different theories, namely UTAUT, uh, AI-based acceptance theories, regulatory focus theory, uses and gratification theory, as well as technology readiness theory, to explain the adopted adoption of smart homes. Uh, so we understand, better understand the perception of risks and benefits to explain adoption of smart homes. Uh, we also confirm that regulatory focus theory fits well uh, to technology acceptance and namely um, smart home acceptance. Uh, and we show that there are two complementary paths to decision-making, the utilitarian prevention oriented goals involving rationality, ease of use, performance expectancy, security and protection, and the effective promotion oriented goals involving affection, happiness, and well-being. 
And we also confirm uh, the evidence of uh, the theory of uses and gratifications on subjective well being. And so this is our third major contribution because we integrate new variables, uh, namely trust, privacy, consent, technology, technology security, but above all, well being, which has never been uh, investigated in UTA UT. And we contribute also to cross cultural theory um, and show that. Uh, uh, our technology acceptance model holds in different cu cultures, but also varies on some aspects, namely privacy concerns in the different cultures. In terms of manager contributions, we show how we advertising and positioning of smart homes should be done according to the different variables and decisions of adoption, namely effort expectancy, ease of use, uh, uh, or um, uh, performance expectancy or perceived usefulness, or protection of physical uh, devices and, and, and privacy. Uh, we see that cost effectiveness is important. Uh, so performance expectancy as smart homes should make safe energy, time and money as well. We show above all the importance of health and well-being related indicators, uh, improving comfort, convenience and health. Uh, we show that smart homes should be reliable, easy to use and controllable and provide privacy uh, due to secure data storage. So in order to maximize consumers' attention of use, AI-based smart homes, we recommend that managers should focus on three key variables, the smart homes perceived technology security, trust, and consequently users' well-being. And we finish with the limits and the future research directions. And so first, our sample may not perfectly represent the actual smart home target market, as only persons who do not already use a smart home were surveyed, which is the case because uh, very few people today use smart homes. It's only the beginning. So this is one major limit. Uh, second, our sample is a snowball sample uh, method. So it's not necessarily very representative from the demographic point of view. Therefore, future studies uh, should be done with demographic representative samples in the different countries and should include users, real smart home users uh, that might already use smart homes. Another limit is related to our data. It's only a cross-sectional study that is only done at one point of time and not longitudinal study and does not measure long-term uh, effects. Therefore, future studies should be done over the long-term with regular measurements to capture long-term causal effects. Uh, that is uh, uh, to measure it at different points of time. Beyond that, we have also methodologically flaws. So respondents only express the views on smart home technology after watching a short video. This is not enough because clearly it does not really guarantee that people really understand the concept of smart home. Therefore, future studies should be carried out with innovative methodological approaches with real smart homes, virtual reality, as well as simulation and put respondents in real actual real life situations. I'm opening a bracket. This is actually what I'm doing with a DBA student of the first batch of the DBA. Uh, he's working for AC Assets uh, in, in Bangkok. And hopefully we might test, he's working on smart homes and hopefully might test a model or a slightly different model with real smart home users in real smart homes, which uh, exist in Bangkok. And although we acknowledge the important role of culture, uh, yeah, we, our measure of culture is really simplified. Right? So the Hochstädter framework is criticized so it would be interesting to introduce other dimensions, which might be more relevant, huh, such as, for example, collectivism versus individualism, social influence, or power distance, long-term orientation. That is why future research should absolutely integrate other dimensions of culture. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, we can discuss about that now. Or do you have? Do you want to react? Do you have some questions? Sorry to come back. What? Uh, I think what you have to get retained from this study is it shows again uh, that you see it's always the same model I'm using here for technology acceptance. Huh? The thing what is varying is okay, here we're doing cross cultural studies. This is what we discussed this morning uh, uh, to enhance our external validity. Um, we used, yeah, we scratched some variables because you cannot test all variables in the model because that becomes too complicated. Otherwise, huh? That is why we took the decision based on uh, literature, but also based on you know, the fact that uh, some variables are over investigated and other under investigated. So we substituted some variables by variables which appeared more important, namely well being, sorry, well being 
and as you can see, well-being is really important uh, in, in this technology acceptance. Uh, so this is uh, what I call change the lenses or the glasses in the, in uh, in your in your glasses. Uh, so if you want to use the glasses, you have to change what is inside to adapt it to to the person. And in your case, you clearly have to adapt your study to your context, to your sectors, uh, and so on. Um, the study. Uh, I enhanced it with different theories, huh? so it makes sense to enhance uh, UTA UT with other theories to make it uh, because it's criticized because it's too rational. Huh? The main criticism of UTA UT is that it is based on rational uh, decision making. We all know that humans do not take full full de uh, rational decisions. That is why we tried to integrate the regulatory focus theory and use this gratification theory, which focuses more on the these effect effective sites decision making namely hedonism and well-being trust uh, so that's why all, again yeah that's the aim of your literature review to find theories that might enhance uh, a basic theory to make it better fitting to your to your context and finally you have seen yeah, the rest it's uh, met method uh, the scales i did not invent the scales at all the scales are all existing uh, they all come from from literature uh, at one step, I use the bed. Uh, it was not a bad scale, but it comes not from top down, which is not so important for you. But in some cases, you cannot do it. You cannot do it differently. Uh, so that is why I took a scale, which is not so so good. And the rest is yeah, data analysis. And in the discussion, uh, we compare our results with the results of the existing research. And uh, you see, no research is perfect. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we all face problems. Right? The importance is to show these problems, to state them, and uh, and that's all. And so don't don't be shy, don't be afraid that you're not doing perfect research, because perfect research simply does not exist. <laughs>